are linked to present potential conflict of interest. Emory University has received funding for my research for the company listed in this slide, Deston, Avon, and Bayer. And I would like to talk to you about the association between diabetes and cardiovascular disease in general, and again we focus on salvation. It's because what is the beneficial impact of your improved glucose control in reducing cardiovascular risk? And we'll discuss some recent uh, uh, trials that have learned a lot, that we have learned a lot on how to manage patients to decrease the risk of cardiovascular complications. So, diabetes is the seventh cause of death around the world. And the United States, it was eight now because we have COVID, but I think in the future we're going to start having an impact of diabetes on mortality. And what I show you in these slides is why people with diabetes die. And here to the left are vascular causes, so cardiovascular disease, much more than cancer, much more than liver, renal disease, pneumonia. Cardiovascular complications is the number one risk of mortality. And this is true in both patients with type 1 diabetes and patients with type 2 diabetes. This slide, although a little crowded, shows that cardiovascular disease account for 1 in 3 deaths in patients with type 1 diabetes. And these are usually young people. And of interest is that in patients with type 1 diabetes, the disease that usually occurs in young people, women have a high, are, are, are much higher risk than men. And we really don't know why women with type 1 diabetes are more susceptible to suffer vascular events or cardiovascular complications. In patients with type 2 diabetes, having type 2 increase the risk of cardiovascular complications by two to four folds. In South Asians, a large number of epidemiological studies have shown that South Asians suffer from earlier and more aggressive cardiovascular disease and higher mortality compared to Europeans. This is a combination of obesity, insulin resistance, nutritional and environmental factors, European also a genetic and socioeconomic factor. So we have learned a lot. For example, if you look at this slide, ethnic variation in diabetes, South Asians compared to white shown in blue, black in orange, Hispanic in red, Asians in the yellow part, to the left are men, to the right are women. Asians have an increased risk of diabetes compared to other races. And if you look at cardiovascular complications, here to the left in the blue lines are Asians, much more than white, Filipino, Japanese, Vietnamese. And to the right are cerebrovascular disease, so the risk of stroke significantly elevated in South Asians. And in the same, the risk of heart attacks, and what we call coronary heart disease, is significantly increased both in men and in women. South Asian are the bar the right. And look, compared to others, white, Hispanic, black, Chinese, and Japanese, the rate of coronary heart disease is much more higher compared to other races. And not only the rate is higher, but the onset, the age of the first myocardial infarction. If you look at the South Asian, all of them, South Asian, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, significantly much younger than the Western European, Central European, North America. So not only that you have more disease, but also at much earlier age. The diabetes, uh, uh, diabetes has been shown to reduce the risk, to increase the risk of dying. And more or less we believe that if somebody with diabetes would lose, somewhere around six to eight, would die six to eight years younger than patients with no diabetes. So, good news for those of us who don't work in cardiovascular complications in diabetes. Here, this slide shows in the blue line that the mortality or the effects of cardiovascular disease in the blue line, you see that it's coming down. So, we have done much better in the last few years. The hospitalization of cardiovascular disease is much, much less 
That's how coronary heart disease are. You see all these lines in blue are coming down. But the lines in red are patients with no diabetes. That means that although we have improved the life, the life the health care of patients with diabetes and cardiovascular complications, they are still much higher compared to those patients without diabetes. So if I can summarize so far what I told you, this cardiovascular disease is a major cause of mortality in both patients with type 1 and type 2 diabetes and the risk is about 2 to 4, full higher. And even for young people with type 1, about 1 out of 3 of death in patients with type 1 and about 2 thirds of patients with type 2 is for cardiovascular disease. And our patients and individuals for South Asians have much earlier, more aggressive and higher mortality. So the question that we have been working with the American Diabetes Association is, if you improve glucose control, if you control blood sugars, can you reduce cardiovascular risk? So there is some data in the past that you can reduce the risk of retinopathy of eye disease, kidney disease, but unfortunately, the risk of myocardial infarction or coronary heart disease in different studies have not shown to be true. So you improve the life by improving glycemic control or glucose control, but the risk or the effects of bringing the blood glucose down and reducing the cardiovascular mortality has not been shown. So, more importantly, we have learned those patients that we try to bring the blood glucose down may have what is called hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. And low blood sugar should be avoided because it's associated with increased risk of cardiovascular events. So on one hand we have glucose is important to be controlled to reduce long-term complications although they don't increase cardiovascular complications and we must avoid low blood sugars. The good news we study in the last five to ten years, we have learned that there is a new group of medications that have shown to improve cardiovascular risk. So in the past, we had multiple medicines for diabetes. They didn't do much. But now we have what is called glucagon, GLP-1, and SGLT-2, two, two group of medicines that have been shown to have an effect independent of glycemic control or glucose control. And there are a large number of clinical trials that have shown that using this medicine, new medicine that is called GLP-1, they're giving by injection once a week or every day, to reduce the risk of cardiovascular death, the chance that you will die of a heart attack, a stroke, by about 13-14%. Then the other studies show with semaglutide once a week, a medicine that has been shown to be very effective that is already in the market now for a few years, reducing the risk of cardiovascular death to having an acute myocardial infarction stroke but somewhere around 25%. So, not only this GLP-1 injectable, but there is also some other medicine that is called SGLT-2 inhibitors that are increasingly used in the United States. They are given by mouth, there are several of them in the market, that also have shown that if patients with diabetes who are at high risk, they will decrease the rate of death, decrease the risk of myocardial infarction, decrease the risk for heart failure. And many of our patients with diabetes have heart failure, or failure of the heart to pump blood. And this is markedly improved this new type of medicine. So, the 2022 this year recommendations of the American Diabetes Association is to use these agents, the GLP-1, HLT-2, these new drugs that have been shown to improve the outcome in patients at risk of having cardiovascular or those who already have cardiovascular events as well as kidney problems. This is a new figure that we published this year with the American Diabetes Association. We should always try to improve glycemic control this is the best way to prevent long-term complications in the eye, the kidneys, amputations. We now have this new group of agents, the GLP-1, HLT-2, that have been shown to be cardioprotective. But we also want 
our patients and doctors to be aware that good blood pressure control and lipid management is the way to go. We want a blood pressure less than 130 over 80 for most people with diabetes because controlling blood pressure reduces the risk of stroke and heart attack. And now we have recommendations for treatment. We have multiple agents and we are using them and the goal is to bring the blood glucose less than 130 over 80. In addition to glucose control, in addition to blood pressure control, we're very, very pushing to get good lipid or cholesterol control. We used to say people over the age of 40 to 47 should be treated with medicine. Now we're thinking that if you have a younger patient, even more than 20 to 39, if they have multiple risk factors, elevated cholesterol should receive medical treatment because it's the only way that we can reduce cardiovascular outcome and heart attacks. We have to be careful for women who are in gestational want because these agents should not be approved. But otherwise, if they're not pregnant, if they're male, even over the age of 20 with multiple risk factors should be considered. For many years we said, well, if you have somebody over the age of 70 and you're too old, then you don't need to be treated. That is not true. If you have a patient with high cholesterol, uh, who are living over the age of 60, 70, 75, should be considered for treatment because that has been shown to reduce cardiovascular complications. We have multiple medicines, medications for treatment of cardiovascular disease. And I'm sure that all of you, like me, over the age of 60, are remember to take an aspirin a day. Now we have changed the recommendation for aspirin. For those patients who have already heart disease or vascular disease, they should be on aspirin. But those who do not have, those younger people, maybe they don't need to be on aspirin because you increase the risk of gastritis and gastrointestinal complications. So talk to your doctors and think if you are a candidate for and for aspirin therapy. So, what are the main take home points that the American Diabetes Association is trying to promote to decrease the risk of cardiovascular disease? First, diabetes, even what is called pre diabetes, is associated with two to three fold increased risk of cardiovascular complications. In the South Asian, earlier more aggressive cardiovascular disease and higher mortality. So we need to make more of make people to be more aware and doctors to intervene early on to decrease or reduce the risk of cardiovascular complications. Bringing the blood glucose down improves long-term complications, but unfortunately only has a modest impact in cardiovascular disease prevention. The good news is now we have excellent group of medicines that have been shown to decrease the risk of heart attack, the risk of stroke, and the risk that somebody will die of cardiovascular disease. But diabetes is just one, uh, glucose, high glucose is one of the four pillars. We need to control hypertension, we need to control lipids, and of course stop smoking and also in the future and now is prevent obesity. I thank you so much for your attention and I will invite all of you to look at diabetes care or the standard of medical care who has great recommendations how to approach patients with diabetes in order to reduce cardiovascular disease. Thank you so much.